1974, and Celine Dion, who won for Switzerland in 1988. Right now on Denver 7 News at 8 o'clock on Local 3, a tragedy we are all too familiar with here happened in Buffalo, New York. New details this morning about the grocery store shooter's motives. Also today, Governor Polis is about to sign a number of new bills and they all have one thing in common, helping you save money. And if high prices at the grocery store changed your eating habits, a Colorado researcher wants to inspire others to forage for your food. See how much he's saving coming up, although his menu might be a little exotic for your taste. We'll hear about him coming up. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. We're starting out uh, with nice warm weather this week. Maybe lunch outside today, Lisa. It's been nice. The winds mm -hmm. were calmer this weekend. Yeah, lunchtime is going to be really very nice. We should be at about 80 degrees by that point, so some good patio weather. Late, uh, later on after that, between about 2 and 3 o'clock, we'll likely see a few storms popping up. It's been pretty quiet, a pretty quiet start to severe weather season. We do have a marginal risk for a little severe weather today uh, with a few of those storms, mainly east of I-25. Some larger hail and damaging winds would be the biggest threat with a few of those storms. Here in town, it's going to be about a 20% chance for a few storms. A little rain, lightning, and thunder this afternoon. Low 60s, though, already right now. Things warming up pretty fast. We're going to see here within the next couple of hours, low 70s by by 10 o'clock will be right around 80 again near lunchtime and then we'll hit highs between about 82 and 85. If you get one of these storms rolling through, it can really drop your temperatures pretty fast. We can go from mid 80s to low 70s within just a few minutes. We're going to see Denver at about 85 between four and five more 60s and 70s for the Central Mountains. Coming up, I'll take you through the timing of some of the storms today and tomorrow. Plus when fire danger uh, gets high again later this week. And this is our latest crash coming in from Lakewood West Denver. It's going to be on 6th Avenue on that eastbound side. It's not on the main lanes. It's on their transition. You can see it right here coming from eastbound 6th Avenue to get to 25, whether you want to go south or north. So that's where the trouble spot is. If you jumped off at Federal, run down to Alameda, there's so many traffic lights in there, and then you have to get around to Sheridan, I mean, uh, over to Santa Fe and try to jump on from the Spooey. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to try to get around it. Maybe get up to uh, Colfax that could help you get there a little bit faster, but it's going to be a trouble spot trying to get to I-25 along eastbound lanes of 6th Avenue. Take a look at the drive that we have up here on I-76. All lanes or the lanes are opening at I-76 and 96th Avenue on the westbound side. Still much slower than normal. It's going to take some time to drain off all that traffic. And let me take you to the camera here at 225 and Parker where you still have the lane two lanes over here that are, are open. One lane is still blocked to the left and still causing quite the traffic jam as you can see all the way back now to Mississippi. We're learning more about the 10 lives lost in what investigators are calling a racially motivated mass shooting at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York. The victims range in age from 32 to 86 years old. They include a substitute teacher, a security guard and a church deacon. Gloria Pasmino reports. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. A community in mourning. I'm sad, I'm hurt, I'm mad because I never would have thought it would have happened here. Police are now identifying all 10 of the lives lost when a gunman opened fire at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York. Among them, 67 year old Hayward Patterson, a deacon in a local church. His friend says he would often volunteer to drive people to the top store if they didn't have transportation. Deacon Patterson was the ones that transported them back and forth to their home so they could, that they can continue to, to survive. 77 year old Pearl Young was a substitute teacher. Her family calls her a pillar of the community. And 55 year old security officer Aaron Salter, a retired Buffalo cop who died exchanging gunfire with the shooter. Lieutenant Salter, who is a hero, uh, who tried to protect people in the store, tried to save lives, and in the process lost his own life. Police say the suspect is from a town three and a half hours away and arrived heavily armed, wearing tactical gear and a camera to live stream the massacre. The U.S. Department of Justice is now investigating the mass shooting as a hate crime. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. And President Biden will visit the area tomorrow. Sadly, this was not the only mass shooting over the weekend. Overnight, seven people were shot across three different locations in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And this morning, police are looking for the suspects. They say it was not a random act of violence. 
And in California, at least one person is dead and four others hurt after a shooting at a church. This happened Sunday in Laguna Woods, just south of Los Angeles. Churchgoers hogtied the suspect and held him until police arrived, likely uh, preventing any further injuries or deaths. Right now, police are trying to figure out if the suspect had connections to the church or any of the victims. Well, today, the city of Aurora is launching a program that could increase safety in places just like the scenes of violence from over the weekend. Denver 7's Christian Lopez joins us with how this program will work. It focuses on reducing crime throughout the city. So starting today, eligible businesses, nonprofits and community groups can actually apply for $10,000 grants and they can use this money for security enhancements like new cameras, lights or alarms. It's all part of Aurora's safety and security grant program and the money is coming from funds that the city received during the pandemic. It's a $3 million program available citywide, but there are $500,000 set aside specifically for businesses near East Colfax. We spoke to one business owner who says she plans to apply because she's dealt with break-ins recently. I believe we will be um, trying to get some help with the security. And beyond that, we're just taking other precautions in here. We don't leave cash in our store at night. We no longer leave vape pens in our store at night because it's an easy, um, you know, grab. We have to um, remove stuff and put in safes now and it all takes more time, but we're trying to protect our assets. There have been a lot of break-ins and so we are trying to find a way to help these small businesses kind of deter thefts in their areas. And for more information on how to apply for this program, you can visit our website, thedenverchannel.com. Live this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Thank you, Christian. Governor Polis will sign several bills into law today designed to save Coloradans money. The bills include ones to cut property taxes, also expand the middle income access program to help people with affordable housing and help employers retain jobs. The governor will also sign a bill that moves nearly $4 million from the general fund to keep the driver's license fee the same. New this hour, Sweden's governing party says it will seek to join NATO, joining Finland in signaling it would join the group of ally nations. This morning, NATO says Russia's military effort in Ukraine is losing momentum and not going as planned. Today, the Senate will vote on more funding for Ukraine. And we're showing you video here of Minority Leader Mitch McConnell because he and other lawmakers met with the Ukrainian president over the weekend. A final vote on $40 billion in U.S. aid could come Wednesday. Turning to sports, the Avalanche finally get to begin their second round playoff series against the St. Louis Blues tomorrow night. Games one and two will be at Ball Arena. They went back to practice yesterday. They haven't played a game, though, in eight days. The puck drops at 7.30 Tuesday night. This morning, we have new details about that historic trip to the top of the world. Two Coloradans who were part of the first all-black climbing team to summit Mount Everest. ABC's Kanye Whitworth has details on their epic journey. Some of them teach or own small businesses, but today, they comprise the first all-black team to summit Mount Everest. Their success nearly doubling the number of black climbers to conquer the world's tallest peak. Base camp is here. Leading the 10 person team is Philip Henderson, recently sharing that seven members reached the summit on Thursday. The team arrived at base camp three weeks ago. Their tents set up at over 17,000 feet in elevation. This is where we live for two months while we we're getting ready to climb the tallest mountain in the world. Waiting for a safe window of weather, training at altitude, anticipating what's ahead and remembering what's back home. Yeah, this is a rest day in base camp. I took my wedding ring off because my hands swell up. So that's the last thing I see before I leave my tent, is my wedding ring. Henderson assembled the team last year, aiming to showcase black athletes, removing barriers that keep them from outdoor sports and inspiring the next generation. Abby Dion, coaches young climbers in South Florida, teaching them how to achieve their big goals. So my big goal with this project is to help demystify the process of climbing your Everest. It doesn't necessarily need to be Everest. A mission shared by Colorado High School teacher and track coach Eddie Taylor. Everest is still going to be hard. It's still going to be this big mountain, but it's going to be something that they don't feel like is unattainable. For Good Morning America, Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Colorado.
an incredible accomplishment for them. Uh, skip the store and save. How much a Colorado researcher has been able to replace his grocery bill with foraged food. Mm -hmm. And just in time for summer vacation, a severe pilot shortage is prompting major airlines to trim flights. Uh, some possible solutions to get more pilots in the air.